Hey y'all, what's up? It's Noelle with Banker's Backyard Bounty. And today I'm just taking you guys along as we go grocery shop in our garden for today. And uh, just kind of do some things around the house. We have had just this like chest, head, cold, cough going around the family. We got his second Corona virus shot uh, through his fire department and that kind of knocked him off his feet for a little bit. So anyways, we are just um, recovering and hunkering down and that just gives me lots of time to continue doing what we're doing here at home. Yeah. Girl on a mission right there. Yeah. The Swiss chard is doing so much better over here than in the side bed. I know these look kind of dinky right now, but look at that color, y'all. Beautiful red. So this is five Swiss silver beet Swiss chard, I think, something like that. It has all those words in it from a Seed Savers Exchange. It's really pretty. So our green egg layers, our new layers, have been going underneath the coop. I don't know if you guys can see like that little chicken run area under the red coop uh, and laying, which requires me to bring my little rake because I can't reach the eggs. So we're gonna go in, Lily and I, and uh, just see what kind of egg haul we have for the day. Hey girls. <laughs> If I'm not entertaining a toddler, it's a chicken. So today I am getting some of our dinosaur kale for kale chips with our chicken sandwiches for lunch. I'm going to be getting some carrots that we will roast to go with meatloaf tonight. And uh, then just getting some, hey, some sweet mint and chocolate mint for our dessert. Our dark chocolate mint milkshakes. What's in your basket? Yum. Not your style? It'll taste better as chips. There you go. Thank you, helper. Okay, so my kid, for all this work that we put into growing things, she will not eat vegetables. Like, will not do it. And, yeah, I'm talking about you. She's rubbing on kale over there. I'm trying to play it cool. <laughs> Ooh, did you guys some snotties? I'm a little bit ashamed of this, but <laughs> our soil over here is like such dense clay. That's why we planted a lot of root vegetables uh, to try and like break that up and just do like some natural tilling uh, using the roots. But the carrots get so stuck, I have to have Reed come out and pull them out because my weak little wimpy arms just can't do it. <laughs> and I just like watching him work. It's kind of hunky. This one I wanted to show you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was, it had, that were this. The Pusa Rodeo. Yeah, but these have been pretty good. It's my carrot grabber, y'all. Yeah. I guess you could say today is like a kitchen day. It's gloomy outside, it's drizzly. None of us really feel like 100%. So uh, what we did today, this morning, is Lily and I made some apple juice with our juicer. We made some orange juice. Um, for me, I know it's extra work, but we have the juicer. Fruits, fairly cheap. And um, I got tired of recycling all of the juice bottles, right? Like buying it at the store and then having those plastic bottles. So this is a way we can just put them in our mason jars and cut down on that. Um, I'm also going to use every single part of the juicing and the fruit. I remember like when we were in elementary school, we studied, you know, like the Native Americans, when they would kill a buffalo, they would use all of it, like the bones and the tendons and the ligaments and like nothing got wasted. And I like remember being like, why don't we do that with everything that we have now? Like why is so many things like disposable? Um, uh, kind of like the settlers would just kill the buffalo and then let it rot, um, which is a whole horrible thing. But anyways, all that to say, like this morning our buffalo is the fruit from juicing. Um, we're gonna use all the rinds for from the citrus for um, 
a vinegar cleaner and you can find the recipe for that at uh, Homestead and Chill. It's basically white vinegar with citrus peels. So it doesn't have to be oranges. It can be like grapefruit. I've used grapefruit, I've used lemons. Um, and you just let it soak in a container of vinegar with the peels covered because air will make them kind of like uh, mold. So you wanna make sure that they stay covered with white vinegar, but you let it sit for like a week and then pour it in a bottle, uh, straining out all the peels. And you got like a really nice smelling cool cleaner. And so we use that in our bathrooms. Right now I have a, a grapefruit version of that, but I'm gonna have this orange one soon. And then this is all the pulp from the juicer, the apple and orange pulp. And you can actually make, I've mentioned this before on a video, but make really good uh, juicer pulp muffins. They're kind of like morning glory muffins. So you can add in um, any kind of juicer pulp. Like I've done it with kale, I've done it with carrots, I've done it with ginger, um, uh, uh, citrus <laughs> my brain's not working I blame mom brain um, but apples anyways any kind of pulp you have from your juicer you can throw it in these muffins it has like brown sugar um, raisins you can add pecans but they're just a really good I don't know fruity nutty cinnamony muffin uh, and so if you've ever had a morning glory muffin they're similar to that but I'll try and find the recipe and link it below. A lot of it's just in my brain, um, but very, very good. So Reed and I have a passion for sustainability and I'm not an expert at it. I'm not perfect at it, but slowly over time, we've been trying to replace like small things. So some of the like natural go-tos that are like real trendy are like, water bottles like instead of plastic take a metal one or straws instead of a plastic one take uh, your own metal straw um grocery bags like those are kind of like easy go-to's but we've been trying to kind of go beyond that and think about like juice bottles think about like the milk we buy actually comes in glass bottles it's 1836 milk which is local to us it's um right down the road in Terrell where they actually uh, have the dairy. So what we do is we take those bottles back to Kroger and they give us a $2 credit and then they wash them out and sanitize them. And so we're not using milk jugs anymore. It's all glass. Uh, growing our own food, obviously there's not a lot of packaging. Reed just read this book called the, what was it called? Oh, The Secret Life of Groceries. It's like the dark miracle of the American supermarket something like that i heard about it on npr he got it for christmas and like loved it but it's all about the backstory of how supermarkets work and just further like encouraged us to i don't know like continue with this path that we're on of trying to like be a normal family like we don't have acreage we're not like all in prairie dresses just hanging out like milking our cows we're a normal family of four that like he works and uh, I stay home with our two kids and like, uh, you know, very American, but we want to make changes so that we are able to, I don't know, feel good about uh, the impact that we're having on the environment. And uh, again, like it's not, I'm not gonna go like, you know, on this big rant of why that's important. Hopefully we all understand why that's important. Our, our earth needs us to step up and it really needs us as citizens, instead of just like waiting on policies and government to do it, they are so slow and clunky. Like we have to be the change. So all that to say, like what we're doing here is making small changes. And I will say like, kind of like the fruit being my Buffalo, right? Like I, I find myself evolving and becoming more skilled at using what we have of saying oh wait like save that because i can use that or oh wait like you know that could be turned into an extra meal like the extra oatmeal we have i can make that into muffins or just small things like that that actually uh, add up over time and we're spending less on groceries we're making far fewer trips to the grocery store and we're getting creative and trying new things and all of that is super groovy in my book so Moral of that whole story is just start with something and you will start to see change because your lifestyle will begin to adapt. The way you think will start to adapt to being more sustainable and uh, more creative with food, with plastics, with uh, trash, recycling, whatever it may be. Um, just like, just start somewhere. It's definitely a two cup of coffee kind of day. I'm just saying.
So it could be more tender too. Doing it that way. So I added nutritional yeast, chili powder, garlic, salt, and some paprika. You can even add cayenne. I'll link the recipe that I use below. But even just like olive oil and sea salt is perfectly fine. They look yummy. Finished product. So good, so flaky. And we'll see if my kid will eat them. Second piece of kale for the day. It was a noble try. The dog loves kale chips. That makes me feel great. So today my garden helper is also helping me collect bunny berries. So this is actually why we have a rabbit is to collect the rabbit poop. <laughs> He's binking right now. Rabbits bink when they run and kind of like jump when they're happy. So I can tell he's happy. Um, anyways, we have bugs for this reason to collect bunny berries and make uh, either rabbit poop tea or just put it right on our garden beds. So with uh, animal manure, it can be referred to as hot manure or cold manure. Hot manure like chickens, um, poop, it has to compost for some time or else it'll burn your plants. Uh, but rabbits have cold manure so it can go straight from the hutch onto the garden beds. And um, so that's kind of what we're doing. Thank you, Bugs, and all my little farm helpers. <laughs> I'm never lonely around here, that's for sure. Thank you, Bugs. Well, actually, fun fact, after like a quick Google search, I found out that rabbit poop has four times more nutrients than horse or cow poop, and twice as much as chicken poop, and they're like, quiet they're so cute they're fluffy i might need some more rabbits in my life we'll see what reed says about that they're all kissing checked in on our worm bin in a little while with you guys so all of this is just using nature efficiently to help us improve soil improve our yields our harvest and uh, it's just cool seeing everything just kind of come together and work symbiotically which is exactly what nature wants to do it's how it was designed so here is our worm bin i fed it not too long ago but y'all it doesn't smell at all like there's banana peels eggshells some cardboard from a toilet paper roll i did put a big layer of um like grass clippings and newspaper in here and that's already broken down so obviously that brown material breaks down a lot faster than the other material but let's go ahead and see if we can find our wormies all right can y'all see them down in there they tend to, let's see there's some creepy crawlies. They tend to disappear pretty quick when I bring my shovel out. I feel bad I'm disturbing them. There's one. Yeah, there's tons on this side. So the side I fed it on definitely has a lot of activity. That side, not so much, but that's where I harvested the worm castings from the other day. So to be expected. So we're just gonna spend the rest of the day hanging out back here. I'm gonna make my morning glory uh, juicer pulp muffins and um, post a picture of those over on my Instagram um, and then also oh thank you meatloaf yeah. tonight yeah may you find the bounty in your own yeah. life all the beauty that it holds and we'll see you soon